Happy Friday and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your host and a big security geek, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting September 7th, 2015. Let's jump right in with this week's daily security episodes. Today's story is September Patch Day, and it's a pretty big one. I'll keep this very brief. Microsoft released 12 security bulletins fixing five critical vulnerabilities, and the rest are important. The flaws affect their Windows operating system, Office, and its components, uh, the Exchange server, the Active Directory service, the .NET framework, Internet Explorer, and many other popular Microsoft programs. Many of the critical vulnerabilities fix pretty serious issues, things that can allow attackers to do drive-by downloads when you visit malicious websites, or uh, things that could execute code on your computer just by you uh, viewing an image or a particularly malicious document. There's also a distributed denial of service attack against Active Directory, which is a pretty big deal. As always on Microsoft Patch Tuesday, you should download and install these updates as quickly as you can. I'd prioritize the critical vulnerabilities first. Finally, do know that WatchGuard's five Fireboxes and XDM appliances will get IPS signatures that can block many of these attacks. In fact, there's a list of the IPS signatures in that window right there. One final aside, do know that Adobe shares Microsoft Patch Day, and today they released an advisory fixing some vulnerabilities in Shockwave. So if you use that, go get that update as well. Today's story is a WhatsApp hack. A security researcher from Checkpoint found a vulnerability in the web client of WhatsApp. You might have heard of WhatsApp. It's the very popular messaging program primarily used on mobile devices, which Facebook bought a long time ago. Apparently, it has 900 million users that like this particular uh, messaging program. In any case, uh, the WhatsApp web client allows you to extend the, the messages on this mobile app to your computer as well. A researcher found a flaw in the way the app handles file transfers, specifically contact cards, which are called vCard files. These are how you can pass contact information between each other. In any case, the researcher found a way to maliciously craft a file so that he could inject either a Windows batch file or even an executable file. That means you would seem to get a contact information file in your WhatsApp client, but if you clicked on it, it would execute malicious code on your your computer and take over your computer. Now the good news is the WhatsApp people have already updated the web client. This is already fixed. If you happen to be someone that uses the web version of the WhatsApp application, you should go update the client right away. Today's news is adult-themed mobile ransomware. The researchers at Zscaler found an Android app on a third-party marketplace called Adult Player. This is, of course, an adult-themed application. Now, when you run this particular adult-themed application, rather than giving you the adult content you want, it actually is secretly using your front-facing camera to take pictures of you. After doing so, it shows you those pictures and asks you to pay $500 or about 230 pounds if you don't want your pictures to go public. So it's pretty nefarious. It's kind of preying on your embarrassment. It also locks up your phone, making it very, very hard to use your Android device. Now there's good news here. You're not going to get this application on the official Google Play Store. You can only find it on certain third-party websites and third-party marketplaces. As long as you only get applications from the official Google Store, you shouldn't run into this. On top of that, despite the fact that this uh, ransomware does make your phone hard to use, there is a way to get it off your phone. If you boot into safe mode, you can actually remove this particular uh, ransomware. I'll post the link to the blog post that talks about how to do this. In any case, it's very interesting to see attackers targeting mobile devices, especially Android devices. You probably want to install some sort of antivirus product on your Android devices. Today's story is satellite-based command and control channels. 
channels. One of our partners, Kaspersky, released some research talking about a new technique that very sophisticated threat actors are using to control their malware. The group they're talking about is Turla. This is an advanced persistent threat actor group that's been launching very targeted attacks for over eight years. So not your typical cyber criminal. Kaspersky found some of their malware using a new command and control channel technique. Now, of course, the command and control channel is the communication mechanism the bad guy uses to control his remote Trojan or his botnet. Typically nowadays, bad guys use HTTPS, encrypted web traffic, but they have to hide their command and control server. If they use a hard-coded IP address for their command and control server, it makes it very easy for authorities to find it and take it down. So lately, bad guys have used a lot of techniques to try to obfuscate where their command and control server is. They do things like go through multiple proxies. They've used peer-to-peer -peer networking to try to hide their command and control server. But ultimately, if law enforcement is persistent enough, they can eventually track down a command and control server through a number of proxies. In any case, these Turla threat actors have found a new way to help obfuscate or hide their command and control channel. There's a number of places in the world that use satellite internet, basically these hard to get to places that don't have hard lines sometimes get their internet downloads via a satellite. Now they may use another mechanism like dial up to actually upload data, but one way traffic for that connection is actually satellite communication. And as it turns out, there's all kinds of ways that attackers can actually sniff that wireless satellite communication. The Turla threat actors figured out that if they could find somebody that's using satellite near them, they could actually use that IP address, sniff on it, and make their command and control channel uh, report back to that satellite user. Now all the traffic going to that user would be kind of junk traffic as far as that user's concerned. So his computer would drop the traffic. But meanwhile, the attacker would also receive the satellite communication and then would have a very subtle way to talk to or control his malware. And this is very nefarious because it makes it very hard for law authorities to actually pinpoint the command and control server. Because satellite can serve a, a radius of over a thousand miles, how do you really know where the attacker is? He's kind of piggy backing on a victim satellite traffic. In any case, if you're interested, be sure to check out the SecureList blog post about it. It's very, very interesting. Now, I don't suspect criminal malware authors will use this technique. It's just kind of an interesting story. As far as what you should do about this, there's really nothing you should do other than continue to make sure that you don't get malware in your network. If you use a unified threat management appliance or a next generation firewall that has IPS, antivirus, advanced threat protection, and other security controls, it's probably already doing a good job of keeping the malware out of your network. Well, that covers this week. I hope you found it educational. By the way, there's a ton of other interesting stories. For instance, did you know John McAfee's running for president? If those type of stories interest you, I highly recommend you follow our blog, blog.watchguard.com or watchguardsecuritycenter.com. That's where I post all these videos. In my weekly post, I also have a reference section full of other security stories that I miss for the week, so you should check that out. You can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Finally, sometimes I post the weekly video on Friday, but I don't blog about it till the next week. So if you want the videos immediately, go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Again, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.